application as well as teleconference. So before we begin, I'll review some guidelines and general instructions for the meeting. Uh, please silence your other communication devices such as your cell or desk phone. This will ensure that we're not hearing any inter interference or causing interruptions during the meeting. And during the meeting, all participants on Zoom, except for board members and South Coast AQMD staff will be muted. Uh, that means you won't be able to unmute uh, yourself manually. Uh, and after each agenda item, the chair will announce public comment. Uh, for those of you on Zoom, uh, if you'd like to make a public comment, please raise your hand, uh, click on the raise hand button, and that will signal to the host that you'd like to provide comment and you'll be added to the list. And if you're using Zoom on your smartphone, please tap the raise hand button at the bottom of the screen. And for those calling in by phone, you can dial star nine on the keypad to signal that you'd like to comment. Your name will be called when it's your turn to comment and the host will unmute your line automatically. So please note, you can hang up and leave the Zoom meeting at any time. And that concludes the housekeeping remarks, Dr. Burke, and I turn it over to you. Okay, well then we will bring to order the admin committee meeting for November 13th, uh, 2020. And this morning, we're going to uh, rearrange the uh, agenda to allow the uh, supervisor Ruffin to go and get her uh, work done uh, uh, for the, her county. We're going to take the uh, analysis and the uh, evaluation of the uh, lobbyists first. So I think that's a Mr. Alatori issue, but I don't see Mr. Alatori. I'm here, Dr. Before we do that, sir, can I suggest you we do a quick writing, roll call? Right? <laughs> okay. And Dr. Burke, uh, Bay suggested a roll call before we begin? Yes, would the clerk call the roll? Council Mayor Benoit? Here. Council Mayor Cacciotti? Here. Council Mayor Mitchell? Here. Dr. Burke? Yes. All present. Well, you didn't call Supervisor Rutherford. Oh, I'm sorry, Supervisor Rutherford? I'm here. Okay. Yes. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Burke. Uh, these first uh, two items, the first one we're, gonna, we're going to uh, uh, address is going to be the state legislative representation in Sacramento. Uh, we issued an RFP in September. Uh, four firms submitted. Uh, they all uh, qualified. So we are going to be interviewing the four firms. The four firms are uh, California Advisors, Campbell Strategy and Advocacy, Joe A. Gonzalez and Son, and Resolute. They're in alphabetical order, and that's the way we're going to interview them. So the first one up is going to be California Advisors. And uh, Ron, if you can move um, Will over, that'd be great. as well. And Ross Buckley, yes. No rush, Ron. <laughs> There's Will. Good morning. Hi, Will. How you been? I've been good. How are you? Not bad for an old guy. <laughs> I say that sometimes myself. Yeah. Well, you're you're back and you're up to bat. I uh, am, would you like to say a few words before the committee asks you uh, some questions? Um, happy to. Just good morning, everybody, and I just want to make sure uh, you know Ross Buckley from my firm is 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 with us as well. Um, we've had the honor of, you know, of, of representing South Coast now, uh, how to do the math. It's been 14 years, um, had a lot of, uh, fun and exciting times, uh, representing you guys. And quite frankly, you know, going through that, uh, experience, I think we've gone through our list of successes and I think we've had quite a few successes, including, you know, several reauthorizations of Carl Moyer. And we've gone through the 16 uh, 617 battle of, of getting that authorized and, and funded. Um, you know, quite frankly, worked tired, tirelessly over those years, ensuring that we protected AQMD's authority. There's always been kind of challenges, and we've in fact expanded uh, AQMD's authority over that time. So 
we very much look forward to continuing uh, to represent you all and we're happy to answer your questions. Well, the staff had some pre, uh, uh, pre uh, uh, written questions. Uh, would someone like to, to ask one of those or multiple questions? Okay, Judy, your hands up. I will ask. Um, so uh, what uh, unique quality does your firm have that make you the right choice for um, the South Coast AQMD? And I see you have 14 years experience with us, but beyond that, you know, <laughs> some unique quality. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, obviously the, the experience, and I think during that time, actually beyond that, we've, we've at times represented the Sacramento AQMD, we've represented the Bay Area AQMD, we've represented CAPCOA um, uh, at that time. So our air quality experience and just general environmental experience is pretty extensive. Uh, we also, you know, represent uh, not a lot, but we do a lot of um, additional work with uh, other local government agencies. We have a lot of experience just with public agencies. I'd say one of the things that, um, as you all know, the political world we live in, our firm represents a wide variety of, of, of clients from, from big fortune, you know, 50 companies, to, as I said, local governments, nonprofits. So that gives us an exposure to, to quite honestly, all the members of the legislature. We don't specialize in any one area, despite our experience in air quality. So, you know, our relationships within the legislature is, are, are, are strong. And quite frankly, they, they go throughout all the different committees. So we, we have that experience. Our clients also, are, you know, we have some clients that are very politically active that I think helps all of our, our, our clientele. So I think that makes us pretty well suited to, uh, to represent present uh, AQMD. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Dr. Uh, Martin. Supervisor Rutherford. Will, could I ask in those 14 years what you would cite as your greatest accomplishment for South Coast? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's what's been interesting since we've started representing the Air District when folks were very focused on smog and air quality met air districts and and uh, uh, criteria pollution and 14 years later everything is about climate change and you know the focus of the state agencies like CARB have, have really refocused. I, I think I would say broadly speaking our biggest uh, what I'm most proud of is that we've maintained and quite frankly re-energized folks in the legislature to focus on what the air district cares about, which is criteria pollution. So the state has continued their, their, their focus and their funding, you know, towards uh, climate change, but we've, we've, it's been a hard fight, but in that we've made sure that money was separated out to continue the fight for, for clean air. We've developed quite a few of clean champions, uh, clean air champions for the district, you know, partly that's how 617 uh, got started. So I think, you know, making sure that the legislature didn't lose focus of the air pollution that, you know, people breathe every day versus the, the broader climate change that, you know, became a little more sexy for a while there, I think has been, you know, a great success. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Ben, do you want to go first? Go ahead, Michael. Okay. Uh, Will, you know, back in the late 80s, early 90s, I had the opportunity to work in the Capitol with uh, Speaker Pro Tem Mike Roos, days of Willie Brown, the Gang of Five. And I observed as, uh, as things changed, leadership changed, uh, people at that time cooperated across the aisle. What's your view and maybe your strategy for us in the next couple of years as maybe leadership may change, uh, uh, people move on? Uh, what are your thoughts for the AQMD and what strategy would you give us about moving our legislative? agenda forward in the coming years? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, you know, at the, at the very basis lobbying, it starts with just educating members. So you, you, we will likely get new members, new leaders who are very well versed in what we do, but we also get some members who have no idea what we do mm -hmm. and, and really need to understand the importance of what we do. Um, and that it's expensive, right? We, we, are, we are fighting every single year for every penny we can get out of the budget for the AQMD. So part of our challenge always starts with educating. And then quite frankly, it's developing those relationships. It's connecting you know, new members and new leadership to, to those members who, who already are our champions and getting that voice to be bigger and stronger. 
I mean, we have some challenges ahead, right? We've got some some fairly new programs that need more money than I think the legislature has been willing to, to fund. We've got massive air quality issues that continue and, and the funding is nowhere near uh, uh, there to meet that need. So, you know, as we get these new members, I think uh, expanding the champions that we have, educating them on the needs. And quite frankly, you know, something we've worked on quite a bit with AQMD is just, you know, growing and improving the district's relationship with other partners, coalition partners, that could be industry, that could be environmental groups, community and social justice groups. It's, it's a lot easier for us to be successful when we can, can walk into a budget committee or the governor's office with not just the AQMD asking for something, but building a coalition that's asking for something that benefits us. Um, Ross, I don't know if you have more there you wanna add. Yeah, I'll just add, I think that's a good question on the leadership part. Uh, you know, with the new term limits going into effect, this is, you know, Speaker Rendon's been the longest serving speaker in quite some time because he's had that time afforded to him under the new limits. Uh, as you mentioned, I think in the next couple of years, it, we should, will see a change in leadership in the assembly given that Speaker Rendon signaled that he doesn't want to do this uh, forever. Um, so as Will said, it's educating these new members as they come in uh, and that's, you know, reaching out to everybody, right? It's forming out a coalition. I was a staffer in the building uh, in a different part of the state than Southern California, knew about air districts. Uh, I worked in the, in the capital as a staffer. Um, it's just, you know, you get pulled in so many different directions coming from that point of view that, you know, coming in, reinforcing, your, like Will said, your champions that you already have, but then finding new ones. Very good. I'm actually good. I think you guys had all the questions, so very good. Okay. Thank you very much, Will. And Thank we'll you. let you know how it goes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Alatore. Yes, sir. Dr. Burke, next one is going to be um, Campbell, uh, Campbell strategy and, and advocacy. So uh, if we can um, move over, Mr. Campbell, Ron. And uh, I believe they may have uh, Angie Minetti. I was doing some, while we're waiting, I was doing some quick math uh, using my calculator on how long it had been since I worked in the Capitol building. I was amazed to see it's been 54 years since, since I worked in the Capitol building. But that's nothing. It's Derek changed Trump a little bit since then, Dr. Burke. <laughs> All right, Dr. Burke, we have uh, Greg Campbell and Angie uh, Minetti on the, on, the, on the video now. Okay, Greg, you wanna start off? Sure, Dr. Burke, members. Yeah, so I'll go quickly. And yes, I have Angie Minetti with me, who's my lobbyist. And I also have Marla Cowan with me, who's ledge director at our firm. So it's nice to meet all of you. I mean, I know a few of you. Uh, we did a little bit of work uh, for their district last year. We got brought on to try to help um, specifically with trying to get the Ben Allen uh, tax authority bill across the finish line. And uh, when that kind of met some uh, early, uh, likely unmovable uh, resistance from the building trades, uh, we stayed on and, and helped your very competent team uh, with some of the 617 and other issues. Um, quick background about me, I've, I've been lobbying now for six years. Before that, I was 20 year staffer in the legislature where I worked mainly in the assembly and mainly in the assembly speaker's office, serving five speakers consecutively and, and ending as chief of staff for Speaker John Perez and Speaker Tony Atkins, who's now the pro tem of the Senate. I left to start my own firm, have a very diverse firm, uh, some local governments, uh, you know, and, and basically every sector of, uh, of California included. But I do want to say, you know, obviously honored to be here, want to answer questions, uh, would love to work with you guys, but We'll say the the team you already have is very accomplished lobbyist and, and we enjoyed working with them. So I just want to say you already are well represented. Um, 
but obviously, you know, uh, if you need more, uh, we're happy to be helpful. We have some questions that we'd like to ask you. Uh, Sounds great. Okay. Uh, Ms. Mitchell, would you like to start off again? Sure. Um, I noticed from your resume that you, uh, a lot of the um, agencies or, or groups that you represent have to do with homelessness and housing, uh, increasing the housing. Wondering um, what unique qualities you might have in addition to that or how that might help you in representing AQMD. No, that's a great question and I appreciate it. You know, what I would just say about me and my firm in general, um, I've just been fortunate. My experience in the legislature, especially when I was more of a generalist and, and you know, for the last five years serving as chief of staff to uh, assembly speakers was my unique knowledge of various, and I apologize for the noise in the background. My wife's car broke down. I'm at home. My son's in the jazz band, so he's playing the drums below me right now. It's the best I could do. I'm in my closet, so um, uh, uh, it's a little distracting. But what I was saying is, my firm, my, what I did in the legislature is, I just had a high level of knowledge of, of of a lot of things, and I think my biggest and strongest skill set that I bring to the lobbying is my unique. Um, experience of being in the room for basically every major deal that got done in you know, the decade prior to me leaving, whether it was budgets um, and during the craziest of budget times and cuts, along with you know, prioritization of which issues were going to be front and center on the agenda. And while I do have a you know, unique kind of uh, specificity, both with housing, um, telecommunications, uh, I also do, uh, I have two of the large investor owned utilities in the state of California. So I think um, my biggest skill that I would bring to help your team is just the, the knowledge of how priorities get made at the highest level and how when you're looking to allocate resources and time and, and get things across the finish line, the flow and the art of how that gets done is something that I've uh, experienced in a place that probably very few in the state ever have. So one of the things that, that we have um, experienced, uh, and this shouldn't be happening, but sometimes we find um, that the building trades have <laughs> not been on board with us. And we've always been supportive of labor and jobs, but um, I'm wondering um, how you might handle that to, to uh, help us get better results. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a big issue. And, and obviously one that quite frankly, I worked a little bit on last year and, you know, I think we're making some progress. There's a, there's for whatever reason, some deep rooted uh, issues that need to be kind of worked out there. And, and uh, you know, the people that represent the building trades at the highest level do have a lot of sway in the Capitol as we all are aware, and they have very uh, firm feelings and uh, ways to carry themselves. And I, and, and, you know, I think it's going to just take a coordinated strategy to try to get past that. I think the, the goals of what we're, what you're trying to do align with what the building trains or what the state would want to do. So at the end of the day, it's a little Pollyannish, but you got to feel like there's always a path when the policy goals can be met and aligned. But there is some personality and some egos and some things that are in the way right now that are going to take some time and, and hard work uh, to try to work through and get done. And I know that, you know, I know Dr. Burke and I know a lot of people, Derek, and I've looked in Wayne and a lot of people here have been doing everything they can to work on that. And I'm, and I'm sure that will continue, but uh, you know, you just got to keep plugging away at it. And, and at the end of the day, hopefully the right policy and, and the right way to, to find alignment and find ways to make it in their interest uh, will win out and, and help you get um, the goals that you need accomplished. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Sure. Ms. Supervisor Rutherford. Thank you. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Um, I've enjoyed learning about your background here and, and certainly see uh, what value you could add. I wondered if you could give us, or if anyone on your team has thoughts on how we can more effectively deploy the lobbyists that we have, as well as our in-house staff to build some of those relationships and to educate uh, those legislators who aren't familiar with South Coast to our priorities. 
Yeah, that's a good question. I will say again, I, uh, you know, everybody could always do better. Um, and right now it's really difficult in fairness to, to anybody to try to connect and to, to move messaging um, within that building. But, you know, I, I don't think it's for uh, lack of, uh, of talent um, and or effort from your lobbyists, both in-house and others. I do think, um, as was said earlier, when I heard about kind of the days of Willie Brown and others, it's a changing legislature and it's changing even from the time when I was there. Um, the way decisions get made, um, especially in the assembly, um, are more a bottom up versus a top down. That's this kind of style that the speaker has chosen um, to utilize. And I think um, adapt those that are able to adapt to understanding um, how leadership works in the legislature, I think is still evolving, but I think, you know, you have good people that are doing it and I think we're all learning and trying to figure out how to do that better. But I do think, you know, you guys don't need an introduction. Most of the members in, in your service territory know the value of what you do. The key is how can you figure out ways, in, especially in an era where there could be limited bills this year and there's gonna be limited amounts of issues that they're gonna be able to deal with. How do you elevate your priorities to be their priorities and get ownership of that? And I think that's going to be the key for lobbying for this year for everybody on every issue is how do you entice individual members to take ownership? Lucky for, you know, the big picture of what you do. I, I, I see, you know, the continued goal um, for just an environmental um, gains and, and a cleaner economy and a, and a cleaner way of life in California is continuing to be one of the top issues for the members of the legislature and the governor. So the key will be, how can you um, get your specific priorities to match and, and, and be part of that bigger and larger goal? But you guys have a good team. I, I mean, I'm gonna not, I'm not trying to talk myself out of a job, but I also am just saying, you know, you have really, you have really good lobbyists and, and I have nothing but um, accolades to say for all of them. Supervisor Rutherford, I'd like to also speak to um, kind of some of the successes and victories too. We had some great coordination with staff um, coming up, uh, lobbying a few of the backup generator bills. Um, and so, you know, we had a lot of great successes and there was lots of FaceTime with staff and, um, you know, in coordination with the lobby team. And so, you know, I, I definitely feel that, you know, there is a lot of talent and skill here. And, you know, in, in the moment when we need to, a lot of that comes up to the surface and we're able to leverage that and leverage our relationships. So there's, there's a lot of great talent already there. Mm -hmm. Well, Angie, I think you did a great job anticipating our, our last question. So I think you, I think you nailed it. <laughs> right. And I can say for uh, a fact that uh, my daughter has nothing but the highest regards for you and, and your firm. He speaks very highly of your skills and, and your ability to move things along. So I that obviously, to me, is, is an important aspect of the evaluation. I appreciate that. I wish she voted my way a few more times, but I, I mean, I still think highly of her as well. <laughs> I'm kidding. She's great. Well, we can keep working on that. Yeah, I will. It's, yeah. it's always a good discussion with her. Yeah. So thank you very much. And thank we'll you. This role, so. All right. Thank you guys. Take care. Thanks, Greg, Angie, and uh, Maria. Uh, Marla, I'm sorry. Um, Paul, uh, Ron, can you move over Paul Gonzalez? And then you can move um, Angie and Marla over back to the, uh, back to the, uh, there you go. And also uh, Anthony Gonzalez and Jason Gonzalez. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Um, Dr. Burke, you want to go ahead and uh, open it up? Yes. Uh, you are one of the longer serving uh, firms we've had, so 
we have some uh, new members of the admin, a new member of the admin committee this morning. So why don't you fill us in on uh, your background? Good morning, Dr. Burke. I'm Anthony Gonsalves, my son Jason on my right, and my son Paul on my left. Um, we're better known in the state capital as the Gonsalves, which dates back to when my father and I worked in the capital together. It was interesting to hear about the Gang of Five because I was actually lobbying here in those days. And when also when Willie Brown became speaker, when there was the Berman McCarthy battle. And so we have a long history in that building of working, representing our clients. And I had the great pleasure and honor to be working with AQMD since 2007. 2007. So with a lot of successes, starting back with Senator Negretti McLeod's bill that we were able to shepherd through the legislature and get to the governor. We also had a big fight in 2013 when our dear friend, Senator Wright, wanted to limit South Coast from being able to charge a filing fee for the transfer of emissions. That was supported by the building trades. And we were able to kill it in Senate environmental and quality. So we've had a lot of experience working around the building, a lot of experience working with the Democrat leadership, the Republican leadership, and being able to get votes to be able to stop and pass things on behalf of the district. You guys want to add something? The only thing I would add is it's there's been some exciting times and um, when our relationship started with AQMD, I, I think the, the one quality that we have brought to the table representing more, more local governments than any other firm in Sacramento is we interface with a lot of legislators um, at the local level that oftentimes I call them former bosses that are now members of the legislature. So oftentimes our council members are coming to Sacramento despite sometimes we caution them not to but um, we've had, we have a diverse base of clients uh, from the far north to the far south, and, and I think it helps us with the district as well. Which one of you was the one who told me the story about your grandmother? That would be me, I think, Dr. Burke, <laughs> about taking her picture and yeah. capital. This, this is this. I was, uh, I was going to Sacramento on AQMD business and picked me up at the airport. And uh, so that's my oh. chief staff person. <laughs> uh, who who uh, picked me up at the airport. We were driving in and he looks at me and he says, you know, you knew my grandmother. <laughs> that was, that was you know, me, Dr. Burke. You know, I, I didn't know, I don't, I don't know, I, you know. <laughs> My ego said, I don't know. There. He said, yeah, she he said, she said you took her picture. <laughs> really? He reaches in the back seat of the vehicle, picks, a, picks up a picture, and sure enough, when I worked at the Capitol building, uh, before his father married her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yes, I knew his, I knew his grandmother. So... Um, she will be ninety. She will be ninety-three in February. I'm not going to say still with us, but I'm not far behind her. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, these these fellows have uh, have been had association obviously with the Capitol Building in Sacramento for a long, long time, and their uh, their abilities are deeply rooted, and I think everybody. And AQMD knows that I wouldn't be chairman if it wasn't wasn't for them because they provided the uh, crucial votes to uh, allow me to retain the chairmanships. Now, there are some people who think they should be fired for that, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not one of them. So uh, I'd like to thank you guys for coming today, and thank you for your service. And we will let you know how things turn out. Thank it's an honor for us, Dr. Bird. Thank you. Okay.
Dr. Berkey, yeah, do you want to you want to uh, ask questions? I thought we had all the questions asked. We were okay, no problem, no problem. Okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, uh, Anthony, uh, Jason, and Paul. Um, Thanks, Derek. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you to. All right, uh, uh, Ron, if you can move over, uh, David Quintana and uh, Jarrell Cook, that'd be great. Okay, there they are. Um, they're available, uh, Dr. Burke. Well, thank you for coming this morning, gentlemen. Uh, I think most of the people on the admin committee already know you, but for those who may not, would you give us a, a quick a summary of your firm? Sure, yeah, our firm is the Resolute Company. It is a very multifaceted firm. We just added a digital advocacy arm to it to go with our normal uh, lobbying advocacy. And we also have a um, six of the nine partners or attorneys. So we also have a law practice uh, that we engage in. Um, we believe that uh, if diversity is our strength, we are strong as hell because we are the face of California. We are a very diverse firm, not only in our backgrounds, but in who we are. So that is Resolute. We represent we represent uh, entities from the far left to the far right, which gives us access to virtually every lawmaker uh, across the street. <clears throat> some of my colleagues may have some questions for you. Ms. Mitchell, would you like to start out? Yes, I'm gonna ask, uh, what is it that we can do better, AQMD, to improve our relationship with building trades? so that um, we can work together to accomplish uh, the goals of the South Coast Air District. I, well, so I'd like to be very clear. I think that some of the issues that we have with building trades are things that we can't necessarily address because they're personality driven by people at building trades. Um, and until that is changed, no matter what we try to do, I think there will be certain blocks there um, simply because it's driven by um, individual personalities. Um, I think openness, and I have seen that, uh, especially with the chairman uh, being open to some of their folks and trying to come to them early with information. So they don't, I think my experience has been they tend to be very suspicious. Also believe that there's always someone behind every corner trying to spring something on them. Um, so I think the earlier and the more open you can go to them with information, um, the better. And I think that that will help move forward uh, the relationship. That being said, uh, I do believe that a lot of it is personality driven. And regardless of what we do, until those personalities are changed, it's going to be a tough road to hope. Let me ask another question. And I'm, I'm wondering what unique qualities you bring to the table uh, uh, as a lobbyist for our organization. Um, well, I can speak on behalf of myself. Um, you know, I'm a fighter and I'm a scrapper. I'm afraid of no one. I have stood up to everyone. In fact, there are people across the street who may not like me because I stand up to them when, I, when I'm fighting for my client. So um, that's what makes me different. I think that almost every lobbyist, I have no fear and I'm not afraid to go up to anyone. So um, my relationships are, again, very, very broad because of the clients that I represent, such as yourself who go across the board, many of whom are very politically active. And um, I think the reason that they bring me on is because they know I'm not afraid of anyone and I will fight for my clients. And um, even sometimes it's to my detriment, I will do it. So I think that's what makes me unique. I, and to, to piggyback on that, I think what I add to the team is that prior to joining Resolute, I was the policy director for the California Manufacturers and Technology Association. And so on my end, I think what I add is bringing the network, the coalition, the relationships to people that maybe uh, were on the other side of fights with AQMD. Uh, so the emitters, the automakers, the manufacturers. Uh, and so I think that helps us navigate uh, some of the fights that you'll have. Great. Thank you. Thank you. 
Supervisor Rutherford, do you have any questions for Mr. Gentile? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay. Any, any, Ben? No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me say this, David. If this, we, we have some great lobbyists, period. I think Judy's put together an exceptional team. But if I was spending my personal money, if this wasn't AQMD money, you'd be the first guy I would hire. So you, uh, your, your firm is not, does not deal in theor theories. Your firm deals in accomplishments and actions. And I, you know, in, in my personal life, I, I also uh, believe in that approach to life. So you guys have, uh, have proven yourself time and time again, because I know when Wayne and Derek have something that no one else will do, they say, let's call Quintana. <laughs> so that may be a good thing or that may be a bad thing, <laughs> but it's a thing I, I, I appreciate and respect, okay? Thank you, thank, thank you. you so much and we'll let you know how it turns out. Thank you so much, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. Burke, that ends uh, the all the interviews and now it's, uh, there's a, um, item to uh, get, well, we're trying to get direction from committee on how we're gonna move forward to the board. So uh, currently we have three firms that are under contract um, and their contract ends uh, mm -hmm. middle of January. And that is um, California Advisors, that is Joe, Gonzal Joe Gonzalez and Sons and Resolute. And then additionally, uh, we have also interviewed was- Would you uh, say that again, Derek? I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, the three firms that we currently uh, contract with in Sacramento are California Advisors, Joe Gonzalez and Sons, and also Resolute. Um, the fourth firm, um, uh, Campbell Associates, uh, uh, they have helped us in Sacramento, um, but they currently are not under contract. Okay. So, uh, I, I think they had kind of a spot contract. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm interested to hear the opinion of the committee. You say so? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This may be an all time first. You know? <laughs> Let's say they're all good. Yeah. I want the video of this. <laughs> Make sure I get the video. <laughs> okay. Yes, Judy. They're they're all really good. I'm just impressed with all of them. Um, I w I would say that uh, we can't do without the Gonzalvi. You know, they are really terrific. And the unique thing they do bring to the table is uh, their personal relationships with the legislators. I mean, they have been around a long time, and uh, I know them from Contract Cities, League of Cities. Um, and they and those are the people who are now in the legislature. Uh, all of those people that I knew back then, they've moved up and, and um, run for office, and now they're now they're in the legislature. So, I, I I would say first of all, I really want to want to keep them. Um, I'm also really impressed with uh, Resolute and David Quintana. I mean, he just lays it out on the line the way it is. And uh, so I, I think uh, they're very good. And, and you know, the, the fact that it'll do things that maybe nobody else would do, sometimes we might need that capability. Um, I, I think, you know, what we're looking at too is Campbell, they're a new firm. Do we really want to add a new firm? Do we want to um, uh, substitute uh, for Campbell for somebody else, for, for one of them that we already have? And uh, I'm not there. Uh, if we wanted to add them, that would be one thing. But I'm pretty happy with the three that we presently have and uh, uh, kind of want to stay in that lane. And I don't know, this is probably not the year that we add an extra expense uh, since we're looking at some budget uh, uh, deficits and shortfalls. And we'll come to that uh, uh, in, in one of our agenda items this morning. So I mean, my, um, 
uh, opinion here is to stay with the three that we have. We've had good success with them and uh, use Campbell when we need them. I mean, we've used them last year. Apparently we called them in for a special task and we could do it that way, the way we've, we've already done in the, in the past. So that's kind of where I am. Okay. Uh, ben, do you have any comment? You know, I, I don't sit on the legislative committee and I know Judith and Janice, uh, Professor Verdu, and, and I'm gonna lean on their uh, take on this because I think they're, they're the ones that have the most interaction with these folks on a regular basis. And, uh, but as far as what Judith just put forward, I, I think is an excellent uh, recommendation. So I'm supportive of that. Supervisor Rutherford, uh, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. I think I concur with Judith. I, I, I came in with that opinion, but I enjoyed hearing the Campbell presentation and think that we do have to consider whether their relationships with the building trades would help us with longer term strategy and if that's something worth investing in now. And, I, and so I don't know if that's the same kind of monthly retainer we're talking with the others or if we want to hire them for maybe that specific task. Um, and I don't know enough about the, the workings of the contracts to know that, and I'm not one to spend extra money frivolously, I think you know that, but it strikes me that that was certainly a weakness in our position in Sacramento, and if these are the guys who can help fix that weakness, we've, we've got to give that due consideration. I think that's, that's a really interesting observation, and I think maybe what we should think about doing is, because in reality, I'm sure that Wayne wants us to reduce our numbers, okay? And I, you know, there's something to be said for that. Poor Jill sits up there and, and wrings her hands over the money every, every month. And uh, you, you have to take that into account, but to, in the operation of the mission, uh, I, I think that we ought to think about a, a way that maybe uh, on a spot basis, uh, give Wayne and, and Derek uh, the opportunity to bring Campbell in because uh, there is no question in my mind that he has abilities that uh, the other three firms may not have. So I'm, I'm open to anything on this. I think that Judy's uh, uh, Proposal is appropriate, and uh, I think the addition of Supervisor Rutherford's uh, interest in, in in the additional firm is also interesting. And uh, I see Mr. Nastri over there wringing his hands below the screen, but you know, uh, some somehow we will make a way, Wayne. Somehow we will make a way. I appreciate that, Dr. Berg. Um, you know, we brought Campbell in to help us, and I thought um, Greg was very forthright in his discussion on the characterization. And I think this past year was, you know, obviously very difficult, given the inability to actually be in <coughs> Sacramento. Um, you know, I think I shared with the board last week that we had gotten a call from um, what staff in the Senate that almost demanded we meet with them. And so for the first time in over six months, we flew up to Sacramento last week. And as you all know, it just makes a big difference when you're able to sit across from somebody. And you know, I'm not sure when we'll be able to do that uh, this coming year, but I am looking forward to that because I think we can make a difference when we're up there. And I think that the idea that was proffered, I mean, obviously we'll do whatever the board desires, but the suggestion of perhaps doing a spot contract with Campbell to maybe come up with a strategy to better do that um, and have it contingent on actually having the ability to implement that because we were all handicapped this past year. So I, like I said, we'll, we'll certainly uh, implement the will of the board. So let me understand if I have the committee's understanding correct. We want to renew the contract of the three current uh, uh, lobbyists and give authorization to the executive director 
to enter into an agreement with uh, Campbell uh, if the need arises. Yes, that's that that I recommend that, and I would support that. Would Would you make that motion, please? Yeah, I'll move uh, uh, that we uh, retain the three lobbyists that we presently have, uh, and that um, we um, uh, authorize our executive uh, officer to enter into agreements with Campbell as needed when their uh, 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 particular expertise is called for. Second. To, to call the roll. Dr. Burke, can I clarify? Comment? I should ask, is there any other comment? Is there Dr. any public comment? Dr. Burke, could I clarify something? Yes. Um, Wayne's, Wayne's uh, signature authority is, is 100,000. Anything over that would need to be approved by the board. And so what I, I just wanted to know, you know, with this, with the spot authority, is that saying it's limited to his authority or is it yeah. something that would? Yes. Okay. Yes. Which, which we really don't even have to put in here because he has the authority to do that anyway, but we're just codifying it. And, 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 and it exceeded that, I guess if it exceeded that 100,000, then, then they'd have to come to the board anyway. You know, yes. they'd come to us and ask for that additional authority. So That's right. I think we're okay. And Dr. Burke, I'd just like to make a clarification. Uh, one of the firms uh, came in, uh, I won't say substantially higher than what they are currently getting, but it was definitely higher, uh, probably in the neighborhood of about 20, 25% higher than what they're getting. And we just want to make that? that was resolute. And so we want to make sure that uh, we get the authorization to negotiate what they submitted for on their proposal down to what they're currently getting, if, if that's okay with you. Uh, yes. I'd like, I'll, I'll make a friendly amendment, including that in, in the motion. How much is that in dollars? Uh, it's about $40,000 yeah. more. I think they earned 40000 That kind of hurts the negotiations there, Dr. Burke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, but I, that's just, I'm just one guy here. You know, they're, that, you know, we. Okay, well, let me chime in. I'd like to, to have our the, staff be able to negotiate if they can get something better. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we, I, hey, man, if you can negotiate something better, <laughs> go at it. Thank but, you, but you can't, you know, this is almost like uh, the people of color thing. You can't ask me to go make the toilet flush when anybody else can't do that and keep asking me to do that and not pay me for that. Yes, sir. That's, so that's, that's my basis for that. You know, you send the guy in <laughs> into the worst situations that you can imagine and when that nobody else will touch, and yet you want to, you want to grind him down to to a. Uh, if the committee wants to do that, I have no problem with that, because that's what democracy is about. But I've felt that too often in my own personal life to go along with it myself. Okay. So, what what was your comment? Uh, I, I'm staying quiet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And the motion is to approve the uh, three renewals and to uh, uh, give the authorization to the executive director within his budget discretion uh, to work out any kind of spot retainership with, with the fourth firm that he may need. Correct. That being the motion, would the clerk call the roll? Councilmember Benoit. Aye. Councilmember Cacciotti. Yes. Councilmember Mitchell. Yes. Supervisor Rutherford. Yes. Dr. Burke. Yes. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Burke, uh, can we also uh, do the next item for the federal consultants? Uh, yes. To renew their, their contracts. So real quick, because I know that uh, we're running late already. This has already been 50 minutes. 
So this is uh, the last of the one-year extensions for the three consultants in Sacramento. That's Kittis and Associates, uh, Cassidy uh, and Associates, and the Carmen Group. And uh, you uh, heard from them during um, ledge committee meeting, and uh, we're asking that uh, 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 for direction if we want to extend uh, the last year of their uh, contracts. Okay. So, do we have them? Say that they they all of them have been terrific. I would uh, uh, agree to renew their contracts. Um, uh, there is one issue that we might consider um, that um, Carmen Associates uh, has been really good uh, with the administration in the hands of the other party. The question is, do we want to retain them uh, going forward? My argument for retaining them is this, that they have been really instrumental in helping us get uh, industry, manufacturers, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, helping us with the direction that we want to go. And uh, that would be the reason I would want to keep them on. So I'm going to put that out there and let the committee argue about it. OK, is there any comment by any of my colleagues? Before I comment, is there, is there, is there any public comment? Just curious. No, OK. I, I support Judy's uh, proposal. I agree with you. And I think right now there's, there's such a divide in the country. I think it's good to have both, both uh, Bobby and Son. Any other comments? Is there a motion? I'll move to retain the three um, firms we now have. Second. So we don't even need to interview them. Were, were they there to be interviewed? Uh, <laughs> no, sir. No, no? Sir. Oh, OK. That's fine. Then <laughs> I have a motion and a second. <laughs> to them. And uh, uh, why is it that Wayne doesn't look happy? Okay, I have a motion and a second. Would the clerk call the roll? Council Mayor Benoit? Aye. Council Mayor Cacciotti? Yes. Council Mayor Mitchell? Yes. Supervisor Rutherford? Yes. Dr. Burke? Yes. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you, Dr. Burke. I appreciate you moving those two items up. Okay, thank, thank you for bringing them in. Thank you. You know, Derek, you deserve a lot of credit for finding these people and making sure they, they get in front of us. So I know you and Wayne were up in Sacramento. Did you ever get an explanation for the cancellation of your meeting? No, but we had other meetings, so it was still a very productive day. Good, good, good. Now on the ballot, let me ask you this, uh, since we're running a little late here. Um, is there any controversial item on the balance of the uh, agenda? Is there I wouldn't say controversial, item? Dr. Burke. There's just a lot of information, you know, the financial update, the diversity, equity, inclusion updates, and the rest are funding. I have, nothing to, I have nothing to do all day. So I'm, I'm for listening to everything. I was just trying to make it as efficient for my colleagues as possible. I, I just have one minor change I'd like to bring up uh, for the uh, governing board agenda review. Okay. Okay. And I, I think we probably should uh, take a look at the budget review just because we we should understand what, what we're looking at in the next few years. And Ben, on, on that change, if it's, that's a change, I think you're getting ready to say, I think we ought to hold on that, 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 that till the announcement. No, this is, uh, this is regarding just uh, public comment and when we take public comment during the general board meeting. Oh, moving it from last to first? Yeah. Oh, I should have known better. Okay. What is, what is let, we, we better go through this entire agenda. Let's, yeah, let's, we probably, probably just go through, we we'll probably get through it pretty quickly though. Yes, yes. Okay, <clears throat> any concerns? Hearing none, uh, no board travel, I'm sure. Uh, report on out of country travel, none. None. Is there any questions on the December board meeting? 
Uh, yes, just I'd like to ask that we go ahead and move public comment to the beginning of the meeting. Um, I found this in a lot of other public entities that have made this change where, although it might seem painful at first, I find that uh, towards, uh, after a couple of months, most of the people that <coughs> come to make public comment, make their comment and they get on their way, as opposed to being there throughout the entire meeting and, and popping up at various items to make comment. And I, so I do think it makes a lot of sense. faster and uh, also gives our public the opportunity to make those comments that they want to make that are items not on the agenda earlier in the meeting. It makes I, a lot of sense. I agree. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, will you make that in a form of a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. second. Would, uh, is there any public comment on that? Um, Dr. Burke, could I ask council? I don't know if you actually need to vote on it. Okay. I think you can just direct us to do it and we'll do it. Yeah, I think that that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then we'll direct you to do that. We will do it. Okay. Uh, then do we have any board member assistance? Yes, for Supervisor Rutherford, Deborah Mendelson. Oh, yeah. Okay. Debbie's up. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion on Ms. Mendelson? Move approval. Move approval. We all Second. like her. <laughs> Everybody loves Debbie. Okay. <laughs> yep. So. Uh, me, it's only about Debbie. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's not about me. It's only about Debbie. About <laughs> Debbie. Don't 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 feel abused. Don't feel <laughs> that. I love her too. <laughs> okay. Would the clerk call the roll? Council Mayor Benoit. Aye. Council Mayor Cacciotti. Yes. Council Mayor Mitchell. Yes. Supervisor Rutherford. Yes. Dr. Burke. Yes. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you. Okay, Wayne. Uh, now is your. Uh, inclusion, diversity, equity efforts. Thanks, Dr. Burke. This will be fairly brief. Um, as you know, we've been fairly busy on this issue. Uh, and in fact, just last week, uh, we put out the solicitation for the diversity, equity, and inclusion officer. I'm sorry, next slide. Uh, so that was put out last week. And uh, I'm already happy to say that we've already had 50 applications uh, we had a chance to review just a few of them uh, yesterday, and it's, it's very encouraging. Uh, this is you know, a plan that uh, encompasses as far away as the entire United States. So we're very encouraged by this. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you can see that our schedule uh, includes uh, concluding the open recruitment uh, within the next two weeks or so. Uh, then we hope to have the review uh, internally. Our overall goal is to actually have the DEI officer join the agency in January of 2021. And if you go to the next slide, uh, one of the things that we had talked about that we formed early on was the Inclusion, Diversity and Equity Advisory Panel. And that's made up of staff from across the organization. Uh, and what they do is they continue to meet regularly and they're providing us with recommendations and their thoughts on a whole host of issues, ranging from communications, engagement, training, and so forth. And in fact, one of the things that they've uh, come to us is with uh, recommendations for subcommittees. Uh, those are currently under review. Uh, one of the things that I wanna make sure that as we continue to move forward with the diversity, equity, um, inclusion officer, is that I don't wanna jump out too far ahead, but I wanna make sure that we have everything ready to go once that person comes on board. So trying to uh, frame as many issues as possible that are important. And if we go to the next slide, we can see <clears throat> that um, a lot of communication and outreach. So one of the things that we wanna be able to do is have our officer in, have additional speakers, uh, and others come in to not only provide motivation and understanding, but training as well. So we continue to take those ideas from our idea panel. Uh, and with that, they're also going to be presenting to the executive council and to the entire staff as a whole through a lunch and learn session uh, for all employees. So we're really excited about that. And uh, that should be early December in the next slide. In conclusion, you know, we continue to move as quickly as we can, recognizing that it's not quick enough. Uh, but we do continue to get updates uh, here uh, by staff from our own staff. Uh, we'll continue to put those together in a series of recommendations. And that once we have our uh, diversity, equity, inclusion officer, we'll be able to hit the ground running. And as always, we remain committed to 
uh, ensuring that we have diversity, equity, and inclusion in our workplace and in our community. So that concludes my remarks, Dr. Burt. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, let, <clears throat> let me let me say. Well, first, let me ask if my colleagues have any comments. I do. I have one comment. Sure. Ms. This is fairly minor, but I think the title of this person, diversity, equity, and inclusion officer, is fairly lengthy and kind of long. I mean, you're going to shorten it to DEI, but I would really like to see something that's a little easier to uh, to, 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 to recognize. Uh, I wonder if you could just call that person the diversity officer. I mean, you, we assume equity and inclusion is included in, in the mission that we're trying to accomplish, but, or any other thing. I just think DEI, and when you've said it with three, with the three words in it, it's like awkward. And so it, I, I just want a title that we can easily refer to. I am. 100% with you, Mayor Mitchell. Uh, you know, one of the things though that I'm sensitive to though is some of the recommendations that we receive from staff and the definitions on diversity, on equity and inclusion, they all have their subtle differences and yet they're very profound to each of the groups in terms of what they mean. We will work on a simpler title. And in fact, that seems to me to be a good question to ask our candidates as we interview them, is uh, what would be a good title for this position? Okay. Well, as a eight, over 80 year old black guy, no matter what title you give them, the title to the black employees is gonna be HNIC. Now, and that stands for Dr. Burke? I don't think I want to say that. <laughs> yeah. You notice that our lawyer knew exactly what I was talking about with because every black person in the world knows that in every organization, including the federal government for the president of the United States, there's always that person in charge. So uh, I, 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 I want this person to be successful and I want the, the staff to have confidence in this person. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I, you need, you need to think about this very carefully because you don't want to hire somebody and turn them into an island. Right. So uh, I'm glad I don't have to make this decision. I'm glad I'm only a mi minor part of it, but uh, this, this is more than a notion that you're proposing here. Yes, sir. But may I suggest, may I, uh... Well, what I think we should think about is it's such an important position that I would feel very comfortable if Dr. Burke was involved. Not in their initial screening, but when you narrowed it down to a few people, I would feel very comfortable if Dr. Burke, whose mission on this agency has been to work on uh, environmental justice, to have him involved. I don't know whether he does, he may not want to do it, but it would be an important, uh, important contribution that he could make. Well, I, you know, I'm always available to help. So if, if, if Wayne wants and needs me, uh, all he has to do is call me. Or he might call Bay, you know, because <laughs> Bay has a sensitivity that has been developed over his entire life. So my sensitivity may be older, but it's no less intense. Then, then maybe the both of you. Yes. Have the two of you participate. Right. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to be involved as well, sir. Okay. Very much. Good. Good. And Bay also, that'd be a nice, nice committee. Okay. 
Thanks, Dr. Burke. I was going to say, I assure you, I'm not the only one involved in the decision making. Oh, I, I, I didn't. Yeah. It was no criticism of you, trust me. This is just, and Bay understands what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because how many times have you seen that, Bay? What I'm talking about? A lot or a little? I'd, I'd say, I'd say most uh, African Americans would say that they've seen it often. Yeah. And I, okay. that's been my experience. So, yeah, it's it's tragic, but it's 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 the way it rolls. Okay, moving along. The next, any other comment on that item? Okay, Jill, I'm sorry to keep you waiting so long. Not a problem at all. Um, I have just two updates since the update to the board last week, um, both actually uh, on the positive side. Uh, we had a very good week for permits. And so we actually year to date, our permits are still down, but we're now 18% year to date. And it has been 19 and 20%. Uh, percent, so it's moving in the right direction. Uh, we just got data in this morning. The Port of Long Beach is reporting another record month on their volume. So they've been three months in a row beating their monthly high and they are up 17% year to date on their cargo volume. Uh, we don't have the Port of Los Angeles uh, numbers quite in yet, uh, but we expect that that will probably also be um, trending positively. So those are the updates that we had for you this morning and we're gonna continue to monitor and report back all these statistics and metrics for you. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Why not? Okay, Ron. Morning, Dr. Burke, members of the committee, Ron Moskowitz, Chief Information Officer. This last Friday, we deployed a new grant management system for Prop 1B. We also enhanced the 1180 refinery uh, monitoring system last week. And we now have over 40,000 people using our mobile app. Uh, we've incorporated uh, the gridded air quality model into the upcoming version and we'll provide a preview video for all board mem members before it goes live. Everything else is going fine and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Ron? Thank you very much, Ron. Sunjata? Good morning, Dr. Burke and members of the committee. Sujata Jain, Chief Financial Officer. Um, this item um, is to present the results of our audit for fiscal year 1920. Our auditors are here from BCA Watson Rice to do a short presentation. And this is an exit conference um, that they have uh, annually after they conclude their audit. Um, we received an unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion. And I have uh, today um, Helen Chu, who's our assurance partner, who will uh, present to you. Okay, Ms. Chu. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sajada. Um, again, my name is Helen Chu. I'm with BCA Watson Rice, and I'm the assurance partner. Um, Rusty Cabellan is the engagement partner. He is also um, um, on the screen here on Zoom. Um, I'm here to present to you, as required by our auditing standards, the, um, the results of our audit and final communication with the um, the governing board, in this case, the administrative committee with the South Coast Air Quality Management District. Um, this is the results for the fiscal year under June 30, 2020, financial statements and the single audit. Um, I'll be going over the, um, the results of the audit, the financial highlights, the required communications that we are uh, required to do based on our standards, management letter comments, and then have any open discussions and questions. I'm on um, slide number three. Um, I'll, I'll wait for the slide number three. Um, the financial statement audit results, um, like Sujata said, we did issue an unmodified, in other words, clean opinion on the financial statements. And that's on the financial statements of the governmental activity, the blended component unit, each major fund and the aggregate remaining funds. Um, we also issued a separate report on internal controls over financial reporting. 
um, and compliance in accordance with government auditing standards. And there were no material weaknesses and no significant deficiencies noted. Okay, slide number four. Um, single audit results. Compliance with each major federal program. Um, we issued, and again, a, a modified clean opinion. The South Coast Air Quality Management District comply with the OMB compliance supplement on each major federal program. Um, part of the single audit, we also issue a report on internal control for compliance, and there were no material weaknesses and no significant deficiencies noted. Um, on the schedule of expenditures of federal awards, a, um, I'm sorry, a clean opinion or an unmodified opinion was issued. Um, the schedule of federal expenditures were fairly stated in all material respects in relation to the basic financial statements. Next slide, please. The financial highlights, total assets of the South Coast Air Quality Management District exceeded its total liabilities at the end of FY 2020 by 762.6 million, which is the net position of the, um, the district. The South Coast Air Quality Management District's total net position increased from prior year by 70.2 million. Most of the increase was due to increase in revenues and long-term mission reduction projects. Also, the South Coast Air Quality Management District's governmental funds reported combined ending fund balances of 935.1 million, which is an increase of 77.9 million in comparison to FY 2019. Next slide. The actual revenues were higher than the final budget by 7.6 million or 4.3% due to higher than anticipated penalty and sediment revenue. The state grant revenue was also higher than expected due to receipt of reimbursement of AB 617 expenditures that was expected to be received in the next fiscal year ending 21. The expenditure savings were 15.9 million or 8.4% of final budget. The savings were attributed to various fiscal measures implemented in the second half of the fiscal year due to COVID-19 uncertainty, such as hiring freeze and spending reductions in services and supplies and capital outlays. Next slide, please. Um, as part of our um, SAS 114 communication to the governing board, we are required to also um, communicate certain matters um, such as uh, what are responsibilities under the general accepted auditing standards, and that's to conduct our audit in accordance with the auditing standards generally accepted in the United States of America, and also government auditing standards, which provide reasonable and not absolute assurance about whether the basic financial statements are free of material misstatement, whether caused by error or fraud. Um, also to gain a basic understanding of internal control policies and procedures, which we used to design an effective and efficient audit approach. There were no illegal acts identified during the audit. Next slide, please. Um, during, uh, for FY20, there was a Gatsby statement number uh, 95, which pretty much postponed all of the various new Gatsby's that would have been implemented during 2020, but it was postponed due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic for additional year. Um, significant unusual transactions, there were none identified. There were no alternative treatment discussed with management. There were no significant issues discussed with management. Next slide, please. There were no uh, major issues discussed with management prior to our retention. No disagreements, uh, no difficulties encountered during the, uh, during the course of our audit. There were no uh, consultations with our accountants. We do request um, a representation from management, uh, which is a representation letter at the close of our audit. And that's basically the management stating that they've disclosed and provided all the information that we had asked from them and we are independent with respect to the South Coast AQMD. Next slide, please. Oh, and, and there were no significant adjustments and transactions. And um, as part of our audit, we also evaluate the key factors and assumptions used by management in making accounting estimates and judgments. And um, uh, when we conclude that all estimates and judgments appeared reasonable. Next slide. 
And, and I'm happy to say there are no management letter comments issued for FY 2020 during the course of our audit if we have any um, uh, recognize any improvements in the internal controls or any process, uh, we, uh, separate management letter comments uh, may be issued and there were none to, re none to uh, report. Next slide. And then that's the end of my presentation. I'm open to any uh, questions. Any questions for Ms. Chu? Yeah. I have no questions, but I would like to congratulate uh, Sujata and our staff on the getting the uh, certificate of excellence uh, from the uh, from the association. Thank you, Ms. Michelle. We certainly all echo that that congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> Since no motion is required, we'll move on to Sujata. All right, um, thank you, Dr. Burke. Um, this presentation is our budgeted versus actual comparison. And it is uh, for the first quarter that ended on September 30th. And this is the first quarter of fiscal year 2021. Next slide, please. So in this uh, presentation, we're going to go over the summary of our results for the first quarter. And then uh, we have some details of the revenues and we will compare those with the first quarter of last fiscal year, just for benchmarking. And similarly, we'll do the same thing for expenditures. And then based on that, we will show a five-year projection. Next slide, please. Um, so here is a summary. And uh, we just want to remind that our adopted budget was a balanced budget at $173 million. Uh, there has uh, been a slight amendment. And the first quarter is showing that the revenues came in at 50.8 million and the expenditures are at 45.7 million. Next slide, please. So on the revenue side, um, here is uh, a, um, a schedule showing our major sources of revenue. And also we are comparing our first quarter uh, of fiscal year 2021 to the first quarter of 1920 and just comparing how we are trending over there as far as the revenues are concerned. So in total, we are very close to where we should be in the first quarter at 29 uh, compared to 28% last year. Our stationary sources are coming in uh, pretty much like last year, there is a slight difference. Uh, permit fees are slightly down and uh, annual operating is slightly up and there's a reason for that. The annual operating has um, in it included money that's coming in from rule 1180, which last year was in the transfer in category. So you can see that uh, difference. Mobile sources is a little bit higher this year because DMV paid us uh, ahead of uh, time compared to when they did last year. So we got paid in, um, September and uh, last year that was a little bit late. The other category also has a slight difference and that's because last year we had received a very large penalty in July. And um, so it's reflected over there in the difference. Next slide, please. Um, and here is the similar comparison from, on the expenditure side. And once again, you can see we are very much where the first quarter should be landing. And in salaries and benefits, we are pretty much neck and neck. Um, services and supplies, um, percentage wise, we are pretty much where we should be. Uh, capital, we are lower because um, some of the capital has not been purchased and we will catch up in the next quarter or so. Um, debt service is uh, higher by $1 million because uh, up to last year, we used to pull $1 million from some money that had been set aside in the debt service fund. We don't have any more of that. So everything comes out of the general fund. Next slide, please. And our last slide is our <clears throat> five-year projection. And in this, there's um, several things going on. First of all, uh, we're showing our uh, results of our 1920 um, um, uh, fiscal year, how it ended. And uh, there is, um, uh, surplus or, uh, you know, we ended with um, more to the fund balance by $12.3 million. 
Um, <clears throat> there's uh, two reasons for that. One is, of course, the penalty that I mentioned. And then also um, in the fourth quarter of uh, last year, last fiscal year, basically from March through June, we were really holding, um, we had hiring freeze, a lot of the services and supplies, you know, we were holding the line. So there was some savings because of that. Um, the other thing is that um, there is uh, no fee increases reflected in 2021, but then in 21, 22, uh, we do, uh, we, we have projected the increase due to CPI and also um, whatever fee increase did not happen in 2021. Um, the vacancy rate is pretty high in 2021. That's what we needed to balance the budget. However, in the future years, we are trying to bring down the vacancy rate to a more uh, manageable um, percentage. So we're showing that, you know, we'll bring it down to 10% and then 8% in the final three years. Um, also, we have uh, projected uh, in our revenues because we still don't know, it's too early to tell uh, whether, you know, we will have all the permit fees and, um, you know, emission fees come at the amount that we have budgeted. So because permit fees, as Jill has mentioned, are still down by almost 18%, we are projecting that um, in 2021. And, um, you know, perhaps uh, we're keeping an eye out, but perhaps there might be some shortfalls in the out years also. In the last downturn, which was in um, 09, 08, 09, we saw that we didn't, have a shortfall in that particular year, but uh, in the next four years after that, there was um, a, you know use of reserves. So that's why we just uh, it's too early and we have to be a little cautious. Um, we've projected out the retirement cost increases that we know of so far, and um, um, pretty much you know we're showing that we are at uh, above twenty percent in the first three years. Uh, in our fund balance, 20% of revenue. And in the out years, uh, it seems still manageable and we always keep an eye out on that. I'll be happy to answer any questions on that, Dr. Burke. It seems to me that what you're saying is that things are okay. For now. Yes, and we're keeping a very close eye on it, Dr. Burke. Right. For now means that's what life's about. <laughs> oh, I get that. Life's always in seconds, because you never know what's going to happen in the next second. Amen. So is that what you're saying, Zinja? Uh, Dr. Burke, we, like uh, I mentioned, we it's, it's still too early to say because some of our, um, you know, the year hasn't ended and we are still only- It's November, Zinja. <laughs> yes, Dr. Burke, and <laughs> this is starting from July, actually, the, the oh, information that I'm presenting okay. is okay. from July through September. And yeah. we keep our fingers crossed that it should continue the same way. I have, I have a, uh, my, my fiscal projection is that if in fact the a vaccine uh, is released to the frontline workers in December or January, and we start getting it to the general population in February, March, April, that in the fourth quarter of 2021, uh, this economy is gonna be rolling because there's so much pent up demand. But uh, I'm not the Secretary of the Treasury, so it doesn't, it, my opinion doesn't mean much. But I think you've done an admirable job, you and Wayne mm -hmm. and uh, Jill have done an admirable job on keeping your hands on this during, during the initial uh, impact. So I'd like to thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could comment yeah. on a couple things. I, I notice in this uh, five-year projection that your unreserved fund balances 
goes from 72.1 down to 24.25 in those years to 30.9. And we are falling below our fund balance policy, which requires that fund balance to be 20% of the revenues. Um, have we ever run into that before? And, and what do we do when we start falling below what our fund balance policy is? Well, let me jump in before Sanjata. Okay. Uh, before her time, okay? The reserves in this organization at this lowest point were $3 million. Whoa. <laughs> okay. When I got here, the, the reserves of this this organization were three million dollars, and I I was aghast. Okay, so we we got fortunate and uh, had, fortunate or unfortunate, but our fund uh, balance went up, and for a number of years uh, uh, we we were in a very uh, fortuitous situation. Uh, so when you talk about 30 million being the low or 29, uh, that's 10 times what it was when I got here. 23 years ago. 28. Oh, 28 years ago. <laughs> 28 years ago. So, you know, uh, I, I think that and what we have done, uh, Judy, is we have expanded the scope of our mission so much in those years that the fact that we could even stay in the ball game financially is incredible. So with all, with all we've added on, and with all the unfunded mandates, uh, we're, we're just in amazing shape. Now, the problem is that we balance it out on uh, unfilled positions. And some, at some point, man, that's, that's got to go by the wayside because the building will be empty, but we'll still be paying our bills, you know, and, that, and that's that's not going to get the mission done. So, um, I, I think that the uh, manner in which uh, Sanjata and Wayne and Jill have approached the future uh, is is uh, very coach, very coach. Well, we will have a better picture in two years and we may not be needing to invade the fund balance, uh, the reserves as much as, as anticipated here. So let's be optimistic. So Mayor Mitchell, that's exactly if, right. If I was just gonna point out Dr. Burke, as you've said to us, you know, those projections are five-year projections, but Sujata and Jill are like hawks. And so, for us, the real ones are the first three years because the two years we're starting to extrapolate out and we can adjust what's going on in the next years. And, and again, that's Sujata, I'll let Sujata explain it more, but we have never gone below that and we wouldn't let that happen by keeping track, like you said, Mayor. Sujata, do you wanna to add to that? Uh, actually, Dr. Burke said, you know, everything. And uh, to your point, Wayne, um, just to answer Mayor Mitchell's question about have we gone below 20%, we have not. Um, Mayor Mitchell, I look back in history and we have always been able to manage our out years if they are currently showing below 20. When we get to that, we're actually uh, at 20 or higher. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's manageable. So We'll keep our fingers crossed. And one thing you want to keep your eye on is if Long Beach and Los Angeles ports are having record months, okay? That means goods are beginning to flow. 
It would Thank mean to, if it would mean to me that there's going to be a surge. I mean, I think it's going to be across all sectors. I'm telling you, I I would die and go to heaven to go to a restaurant and have a meal. <laughs> I just, you know, I never, I, I used to hate restaurants. I haven't gone, to, it's just now. I, and I'm sure that I'm not alone in, in that. And to go to a ball game and, and to go see my friends. I was talking to one of my friends last night and I said, you know, I haven't seen you in six months. This is a guy I used to hang out with every week. You know, there's a lot of pent up stuff in the United States, yeah. and I, I got to tell you, I think that when it starts going back to normal, all this division in the country is, is politically is going to subside. That's what, that's you know, what I think so. Because, you know, if you start pushing people and, and putting that stress on them that is currently on people about how to make a living, how to make your house payment, Quite frankly, I don't even understand how some people are doing it. Yeah. And they're not. They're barely making it. Right. So when that stress goes away, this is, this is going to be a different place again. I just hope I live to see it. Okay. Thank you very much, Sunjana. And uh, you're done. So that would move us along to Thursday. <laughs> Next Thursday or Wednesday or whatever day we're taking so long here. Uh, well, Dr. Burke, we still have two items. Item 13. I know. We have Jason Lowe and we have John Oliveira. Yes. Jason. Hi, Hi. Good morning, Dr. Burke and members of the committee. Jason Lowe, Assistant Deputy Executive Officer of Science Technology Advancement. Um, this item is a pretty routine one to recognize expected revenue up to $350,000 from the US government for the Enhanced Particulate Monitoring Program and up to almost $800,000 from the US EPA for the PAMS program. The action then is to appropriate the funds in the Science Technology Advancement Budget and transfer $350,000 between major objects to re realign expenditures for the Enhanced Particulate Program. And lastly, to issue solicitations execute purchase orders and amend contract for meteorological equipment and services in support of the PAMS network. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for John? Hearing none, uh, this item does need a motion. I will accept a, a motion. How about- Move staff's recommendation, Mr. Chair. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any public comment on this item? No, sir. Then will the clerk call the roll? Commissioner Benoit. I think uh, Ben had to leave. Okay, Councilmember Cacciotti? Yes. Councilmember Mitchell? Yes. Dr. Burke? Yes. Motion passes three to zero. Okay. Uh, I see after that, what we have is uh, Mr. Alatore's written reports that come in every month. Uh, are there any other matters before the committee. Dr. Burke, item number 14, the uh, list of pre-qualified vendors for mailing services by John Alvera. Oh, I missed John once again. Okay. Back to you, John. Sorry. No problem. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Burke, members of the committee. John Alvera, Deputy Executive Officer for Administrative and Human Resources. This action is to establish a pre-qualified vendor list that will be used for mailing services for a three-year period. Three proposals were received. All were deemed qualified to be on the list. Vendors on this list will be given an opportunity to bid competitively for mailing jobs. And sufficient funds are in this year's budget and will be requested in future budgets. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Oliveira? Any public comment on this item? No, sir. Would the I'll clerk call the roll? Recommendation. Second. Motion. Would the clerk call the roll? Councilmember Cacciotti? Yes. Councilmember Mitchell? Yes. Dr. Burke? Yes. Motion passes three to zero. Okay, is there any other business before the uh, committee? Is there any public comment? Nope. Next meeting date is December 11th, 2020 at 11, 10 a.m. Thanks everybody and have a nice weekend. See you later today. <laughs> Thank you everybody.
Bye. Bye. Bye.